the college football AP Top 25 was released and the Associated Press putting it out because I have gone in on them last year, every single week. When there are inconsistencies, they will get pointed out here on the Unafraid Show. And I have some thoughts. Now, Georgia at number one. This absolutely makes every piece of sense in the world. Every piece of sense in the world with Georgia at number one. Because Georgia, my friends, is the best team in college football right now. You have to trust their head coach in Kirby Smart. You have to trust their quarterback in Carson Beck. And even though that they didn't finish last year as college football, as a college football playoff team, their statement victory against Florida State, even though their players were out, it showed that Georgia was like, listen, we not letting off this gas. I don't care who you put out there. And I have Georgia as my number one, as part of my college football apostles, preseason top 25 because this came out even before the ap poll so you guys can look and compare the one thing i cannot figure out in terms of the top 25 and the beginning of it is why the ap voted ohio state above oregon for the number two spot now i'll give you the fact that ohio state's returning defense it actually might be one of the more impressive units of the last couple of decades but if it comes down to trusting the head coach and quarterback? Are we really putting Ryan Day and Will Howard above Dan Lanning and Dylan Gabriel? Now I'll ask you guys that, leave it in the comments, share with a friend, all of that stuff. And I gotta tell you, here's what the truth is, is that Dylan Gabriel's career completion percentage is higher than Will Howard has ever had in any individual season. And Will Howard's impressive full season at Kansas State last year it would have qualified as Dylan Gabriel's worst season by far. Now, usually I just blame this on the Big Ten's reputation versus the Pac-12s, but there is no more Pac-12. I just think that these writers are a little bit confused when it comes to that. One. Now, we got to look at some of these other rankings, though. And let's start with Alabama at number five. Nick Saban is gone. And I will say that Kalen DeBoer, his recruiting has been highly impressive highly impressive at alabama highly impressive and i think that that's part of the reason why he left washington is because he knew that he was going to be able to recruit at a high level at alabama and easier than it was to washington even though washington can be an absolute juggernaut in college football now, there were 20 players that left Tuscaloosa as well. And obviously, I just said, Kalen DeBoer is a fantastic coach. And I don't think that Alabama actually lost enough off their team, considering what they brought in and the coaching as well, that they should be outside of the top 10. But inside of the top five? Yeah, no, no, that's a no for me. And I personally think that Ole Miss deserves more preseason respect than Alabama, returning quarterback. They hit the transfer portal hard. This is probably Ole Miss's deepest team that they've had in maybe ever. And as far as the rest of the top 25, there are far more similarities between it and my personal top 25 than there are differences. Because we share 23 of the top 25 teams with the AP giving shots out to Texas A&M and Kansas at number 20 and 22, and me including Washington and Louisville at 18 and 20. Now we also have five teams ranked in the exact same spot and 11 within one spot of each other because I base mine on three criteria, schedule play as we get into the season, dominance and quality wins. Now in the preseason, you don't have that, but those are the criteria that the Unafraid Show poll is based upon. Now, the biggest differences that I can see here are Michigan getting a top 10 designation despite only returning, not one, not two, but only three starters. And I think that the winning culture at Michigan is there. Are they gonna have a distraction from all of the, the, the Netflix documentary, the notice of allegations the stuff with sharon moore and jim harbaugh and everything else that could be a distraction but their culture is good and it's not not only is it not a good year to be breaking in an entirely new offense especially with the defenses that the big 10 has this year i have the wolverines lower than pretty much everybody else at number 21 and call me crazy you can call me crazy if you want to, 
but I also like both Miami and Iowa to contend for a spot in the college football playoff. Because you got Cam Ward over at Miami. He gives Mario Cristobal the most dangerous weapon that he's had during his Hurricanes run. But the question is, is that Mario Cristobal's quarterbacks, including Justin Herbert at Oregon, did not light up the stat sheet the way that you would have thought it would have run. So the question is, is it the offensive coordinators that he's had, or is it the style of play that Mario Cristobal likes to play? Because he he is going to instill an attitude of toughness and a mindset of physicality with his teams, no question. But the thing you gotta watch about his teams are that they end up in a lot more close games than they should. And when you end up in close games, a penalty, drop ball, mistake, that can cause a loss instead of knocking the doors off of people and blowing people out. And then you got Iowa, who finally decided to end the days of, of Brian Ferentz putting his O in nepotism when it came to that disgustingly inept offense. Maybe it's addition by subtraction for the Hawkeyes, but when you look at the details of their first scrimmage, Oof, I don't know if their fans are going to be excited at this point in time until they see some points go up on the board because it might just be more of the same with Cade McNamara on their center. And the AP poll has Iowa at 25. I have them one spot outside of the top 12 because this defense is going to defense. And if they can get anything on offense, they're going to be a very, very dangerous team. Now, our biggest disconnect is one I have to point out as loudly as possible for my friends up in Seattle, for the Washington Huskies fans, because Washington finished 32nd in total votes heading into 2024. And I have the Huskies at number 18. And remember, I am the exact same person that had Washington at number two for the majority of last season, despite everybody else having them outside. I had them in front of Oregon, had them in front of a whole lot of teams as one of the two best teams in the country. And where did they finish? Hmm, number two in the damn country. Lost in the national championship game. And I want Washington fans to remember this. So tag a Washington fan here because when I get called a bunch of uh, haters and everything else or Oregon honk, any of that during the middle of the year by all the people with the purple avatars, make sure that y'all remind them of this and remind them of last season when I told them that they were one of the two best teams in the country. Now, another thing to pay attention to is the AP's highest ranked group of five team because they're guaranteed a spot in the college football playoff and none of them made the top 25. But Boise State finished with the 28th most votes, so the 28th spot. And even with Caden Salter returning to Liberty to try to return last year's 13 and one season, that might be the one the voters actually come to regret. Now, you guys let me know your thoughts on the AP poll heading into the season. What did they get right? What did they get wrong? And make sure to subscribe to Unafraid Show here on YouTube and <laughs> subscribe to the College Football Apostles podcast to get the best college football content all season long.